musicals. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I was recommending the musical Chicago, and Paul was like, I hate music. I do. I despise music. When it comes on, I do the negative dance. I do a negative. <laughs> I stand as still as I can, and I try to absorb all the positive energy being emitted. I, I think it was that you, you and Kevin both have uh, an aversion to musicals, which yes. I also understand. I don't like the... I don't know about you, Kevin, but I don't like the put onness of it. Yeah, that part of musicals feels very mandatory fun yes. to me. <laughs> which is which is why I don't like amusement parks because because there's the mandatory fun uh-huh, aspect to uh-huh, them. Uh-huh. Work parties. I don't think I've even been to a work party since I was at my office job for so short uh-huh. a period. Bless your soul. Uh, we, we we do in the animation industry a lot. Everyone's while and they're like they're fine, but I'm also like, guys, I want to go home. That's the thing. Yeah, everyone's like, you gotta have fun here because we got, we have to be bonding. Yeah. You know what would make me like you more if I only had to see you the minimum amount of times I have to see you. <laughs> uh huh. Well, I'll do the like, I'll do like the, I'll be there for an hour and a half. I'll have a nice time with everyone. And then I, I am going home yep. because I have things to do. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh huh. Musicals, though. My parents are super into musicals. They love the shit out of musicals. My dad actually uh, reviews musicals. Oh, fun. What? For um his uh, news station. Kevin, your dad is so interesting. <laughs> What, because he likes Gundam and musicals? and yes. uh, Yeah. That's very interesting. That's incredibly interesting. I want to party dad. with your dad. <laughs> Yeah, my dad. My dad's cool as shit. I've been. I've any snowboards, and yesterday we played like six hours of Magic: The Gathering, just nonstop. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Kevin's dad's an enigma to me because when I did when I visited, I feel like your dad was very busy. We we had some good time. He was very personable and came out and talked a lot. But he was he was busy, so I didn't get to spend any time with him. So I feel like he's an enigma to me, a cool enigma. Well, he was busy because he was building his unicorn Gundam. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I gotta get this done. Yes, he was flying to Japan that weekend to go pick up some more Gunpla. <laughs> Unfortunately, my dad works like maybe more than I do. Yeah. Like it's close. Like my dad is pretty much a workaholic, mm-hmm. so he's not he's not often around, and he's also he's he's a little bit of a shy boy. He's he can be a little shy, but mm-hmm. he. Definitely, he definitely asks about you, Paul, and he hopes you're well. Yeah, I, I like I said, he he would well, make it making me feel kind of weird. He was here. <laughs> well, he asked not talk about he me. asked about you all the time, Chad. When I came up there, <laughs> when I went up there, he's like, what? he was like, he was like, what are you doing here without Chad? <laughs> it's fine. He hasn't met me. It's okay. I'm not in his heart yet. It's you fine. will, but you gotta get that. But but he likes musicals a lot. Like a a lot a lot. Like he read the book of Hamilton, but that Hamilton was based on, and then Hamilton became a thing, and he was like, "Oh my god, my my interests are colliding." Oh, oh wow. he read it first before he even knew about Lin Manuel also getting stoked on that book. Yeah, I mean, he definitely knew about In the Heights. That's what the book's called, In the Heights. No. Um, oh, Paul, you sweet summer child. That's oh, what boy. Lin-Manuel Miranda's previous musical is. Oh, 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 is, oh, 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 gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I'm done. I was, it, I was in a lot of musicals. Uh, I was in a fair amount of musicals in high school yes. And, yes. In, yes. and in college <laughs> and in middle school. And I worked at a, a summer camp for middle schoolers that did musicals. This is making a lot of sense. But but I've, I, I've always resented them. <laughs> Kevin, how many times have you had to be in the middle of a normal conversation and then look at everybody and bend down a little bit and start shaking your hands and start getting excited about stuff? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be in a little conversation and then some chords will happen like da 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 da, da. and then I'll look off into a corner and then I'll and then I'll look off into the other corner and I'll put plant my feet shoulder width apart and I'll be at a forty five degree angle on the stage and. Uh, <laughs> Then I'll mess up all of my uh, notes because I can't I can't sing very well. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I would love to watch you do a musical. Chad, if 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 you come to if you come and stay at my parents' house, you will see my of uh, my varsity letters for for being in musicals. You guys got chevrons for musicals, <laughs> mm-hmm. dude. I will show up in my Letterman jacket, and you wear your Letterman jacket, and we just play, and we just throw the football while singing back and Do forth. Do you have a football? Backyard. You have a football Letterman jacket? Yeah. Wow. You guys don't. No, I didn't do any sports. <laughs> <laughs> it's that it's that whole money racket. You get your pe- kids to spend hundreds of dollars on it, buying in a Letterman jacket. Paul, what were your high school activities? Zero. Do not <laughs> n- not do activities. You didn't you didn't pursue extracurricular interests? Mine was idiocy and snark. That was my <laughs> that's what I lettered in. <laughs> 
Paul was hanging up on the higher part of the bleachers every time. I was under the bleachers. Oh, shit. <laughs> but you, you didn't join Snark Team? <laughs> <laughs> sadly, sadly, in Pennsylvania, we don't have varsity jackets for snark team. If there was like a chef, we're just like eyes rolling or something. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> the tagline for this one is sink or sink. And I do believe that this story sank. Sink or stink. <laughs> this was stink, stank, stunk the book. We read The Curse of Camp Cold Blake, right? Yeah, right? That's what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Best cover. Great cover. Amazing cover. But what a curse of a story to have to read. What a curse of a character to have to follow around for this. What a what a what a horrible book to have a curse. Yeah. I kinda, I, I, I kinda loved it. Did you really? Wow. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> now we got a podcast, boys. I went through some phases of it. I is interesting. Oh boy. Love it. I, I think I know exactly why you guys hate it. I'd be, I'd be curious. Like, let's let's talk about this book. Well, okay, first off, let's just lay some groundwork here. So far, throughout the run of all Goosebumps books, the camp books have been the best. Right, Chad? Yes. Yes. I think uh, Camp Jelly Jam, mm-hmm. uh, Werewolf Camp, whatever that mm-hmm. one was called, the mm-hmm. one where they're all secretly on the moon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all the camp books are usually a pretty solid, solid read. Yeah. So we were excited going into this one, and Kevin, we told you that all camp books had so far been pretty good. Yeah, you were like, get your hopes to an un- an unreachable high. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, all right. They're there, set. They're, they're on the top of the refrigerator where no one can reach them. And Kevin was the first one to message all of us and say, well, that book sucked. <laughs> yeah, book bad. <laughs> book Book bad. Uh, by the way, also, like, you guys said, may have had a different slug line. Mine on the cover was, last one in is a rotten goat. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, you know, I was looking at the Wikipedia page, and it's the blurb on the back is sink or sink. That's right next to Tim Jacobus's pretty, yeah, I'd say a pretty good cover of a skull, a skeleton with eyes and hair peeking out of the water like, uh, Jason. It's a scary mm. image. That's really scary, I think. I, I don't know. I don't like the water. Here's a fact about Kevin. Uh Uh-oh. I don't like going up high. I don't like going to the depths of the ocean. (laughs) Well, water, water, what is water if not high that you can float in? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Paul Ritchie's talking some sense here. What is water if not air but thicker? The ocean is just an inverse sky. Yeah. That you can't fall through, but you can't fall up into the sky either. I'd say the ocean is a worse (laughs) sky. Because it's got all this fucking octopus in it. Like, the sky is relatively octopus-free, yeah. or so they'd like you to believe. Oh, yeah. Oh, l- lucky us. A great, one of the greatest things that, like, I can scare myself instantly if I imagine myself floating in the ocean in, wa- in open water, no, no land to be seen, and just imagine a whale s- swimming beneath me. I pee, yeah. I pee my pants. Thalas, thalassophobia, or whatever, That's what right? it is. I have that terribly. I can't even look at pictures of those things. No. There, I'll get. I'll share a just a completely horrible image that should never be seen. There, that's what. I, that's yeah. my fear. That's my fear right there. And that's you're as a giant dick worm, uh, the size of a continent, reaching up to get an old Spanish ship. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, you guys know I love my Spanish ships and taking them out into the ocean. <laughs> See, I look like oh, that guy's a hero. He's going to stop uh, conquistadors or something. <laughs> I'm the good conquistador. I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> I was born on the ground, and God, for God's sakes, I, I want to die, die on, the on, ground. on the ground. So, Kevin, I get your fear. I'm with you on that. Relatable. <laughs> you know what else is relatable? The second line in this book, which is, I was nervous when I arrived, and I guess I did some dumb things. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's me every time I go out of the house. I wish... This girl was relatable, uh, Sarah, who is our our protagonist and perspective character, Mm -hmm. but she just fucks up so much and in petty, terrible ways. She has no self-awareness whatsoever. No (laughs) self-control. No self-control. No self, like, tattoo, poor self-control on her forehead. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like Post Malone, always tired. <laughs> yeah, but poor self control on her forehead. <laughs> anyway, sorry, sorry. Uh, so Sarah Moss, Moss, Sarah Moss. She's uh, she's twelve. Her brother Aaron is eleven. <laughs> Stayed for Sarah Moss. 
She's 12. She uh, is very kind of neurotic, and she doesn't like to be outside or at camp or anything or anyone. She doesn't like doing things. And the good news is she dies in this book. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry, but name like one redeemable thing that this character does. Oh, one redeemable thing. Her her last name is Moss, makes me think of Liv Moss, makes me think of Taco Bell. Okay, okay. Paul, you will you will notice on the record it says name one thing this character has done. <laughs> <laughs> she had the name. She had the name Sarah Moss and she kept it. She <laughs> made me think of Taco Bell. That's it. She did that. Uh, <laughs> I I I agree. Sarah Moss makes a lot of bad calls in her time at camp. But it starts out with like her seeming like she's relatable, nervous energy, anxiety, sure. But then when we find out that really it's just her desire for attention and to be loved and to have everything she wants that really is causing the Whoa! problem. Wow. <laughs> she walks into a room, which she arrived late to because the other girls yes. were there first. She walks into the bunk. Realizes she has the worst bunk again. She showed up later than the other girls. They got the best. They got the best bunks. And then she said, "No, I don't want to sleep by the open window. Bugs will bite me." You other girl, you must have yeah. that life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. That that's a major. She fucked up there. Yeah. She fucked up. Big faux pas. There, there are ways around that problem. Like c- perhaps some sort of uh, window closing device could be <laughs> manufactured. <laughs> See, I thought it was just like there's an open hole in the wall and the camp's not going to spend any money to fix it. So that's just your window. The I think, you time. know, Chad, that I think that is kind of what was implied as what was happening. But I was like, there's got to be like, take a fucking boogie board and like nail it to it or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, you got to have a boogie board or a raft or for, something. For, for water camp? Yeah, they probably had a, bur- a boogie board. Liner. A boogie board. A boogie board. A boogie board. A boogie board. Uh, it's the Swedish boogie board. <laughs> yeah. I love Swedish Pokemon. Uh, I I agree. She she shows up and immediately makes the worst impression. And I don't know why the camp counselor listened to her, right? Like Richard or Jen, one of the two counselors, is like, what's going on in here? Why is everyone so upset? I, I love that every adult in this book mm-hmm. is the most uncritical thinker in the entire <laughs> world. Like, they only do what they're told or regurgitate the information that they're specifically asked to regurgitate like she'll be like make them switch bunks with me and it'll be like beep boop okay someone switch bunks he's not like well let's think of a better way to solve this Uh it's really weird that richard just immediately went okay cool other child you have to move and then yeah i think he saw the way sarah was acting and was like this one's a handful. We're gonna have to appease her. Appeasement is the only pro- is the only solution to this. Uh, mm. l- having worked at a camp, appeasement never works. Sarah Moss wants the Ryan <laughs> land, and she shall have it. <laughs> <laughs> o- okay, so her bunk mates. Mm-hmm. Should I, should I list them off? Do we need to know their yeah, names? No, I mean they don't really come into play other than Brianna, I guess. But yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Time. Well, I mean Janice is a is a big player. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jan- oh yeah, fucking Jan. Jan is br- a brutally vengeful person. <laughs> we'll get to Jan in a second. Uh, uh, Meg is the chubby kid who exists to be the chubby kid mm-hmm. and have lots and lots of descriptive text describing how chubby she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Uh-huh. Which, uh, according to the wik- wiki, uh, we were reading an old version of this book. They have removed those. She's no longer referred to as being the shape of a bowling ball. Did they... <laughs> I is that really in one of the old versions that she was described? That was in shape? ours. At this point, maybe I just block that out, right? Like maybe yep. I just moved. I almost it. felt like they were trying. To, he was like trying to be polite about her weight, but could not help himself to throw that one. <laughs> I was like, she's a fucking mess. <laughs> Perfect body, RL. Body by RL. Health protein shake, RL. <laughs> Honestly, I was more. I was more distracted by the third kid uh that was described you know they talk about like again he always talks about the clothes mm-hmm. and their physical form mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it's only when the third kid was i forget her name but she's like oh an african-american girl i'm like mm-hmm. oh so everyone else is white got it cool mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. because you didn't say that for anyone else their their skin or nationality <laughs> right like not to give rl too much credit but i wonder if that was a standards and practices thing or like someone came up from on high and be like you have mm. to have some diversity in your work and he's like uh okay i know how to do that sure mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
Got it. It's 1997. I got it. Yeah. I forgot that, that that was Brianna too. Like so, Brianna's more important. Who who has to move bunks? Which one has to? Is that Jan? There's Jan, Meg, and Brianna, and I think that Brianna has to move. Yeah, Brianna has to move bunks because she wants to be with Meg because they were at camp together last year. Right, and we can only assume from the ending that Meg was crucial to Brianna's life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. So already, like you know, it's weird that Brianna is the one that's tied to another kid mm-hmm. and not Jan, knowing where the reveal goes at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, on top of this whole kerfuffle making Megan Brianna hate uh Sarah. Mm-hmm. Uh Sarah picks up a backpack that she believes to be hers even though she is told, "Hey, that's mine." <laughs> to which she says, "No, it's mine." And then and then tears it open. Confidence of a serial killer. <laughs> this is my backpack. <laughs> Uh, and then revealing Janice's asthma equipment and medication. And, and she screams, Janice, you have asthma? I know. <laughs> As if it's like a really big shame mm-hmm. moment. <laughs> As if it's a contagious thing. It's <laughs> putting everyone else in She jail. has the dark mark. Like, like what is... <laughs> yes. uh, and, Jan, and Jan is very upset about that, right? She's like, you've had my dark secret. Jan Jan is like, this will ruin my camp activities because now I can't do the swim swim. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Okay, so I just want to point this out because at this point, yeah, Sarah's fucking up a lot. She is is making several wrong first impressions. She is like the bowling ball, I will say. Damn, damn. But, Mm -hmm. but in terms of the asthma thing. Right. Jan's like, well, now they won't let me do the, you know, the, at one point, you know, a couple chapters later, she finally says that they won't let me do the six day canoe trip, which sounds like a fucking slog. <laughs> um, <laughs> but and I'm like, yeah, good. If you have asthma, they should know. Like, it was kind of I had that side. of. There's it. a moment in the later in the book that happens that I'm like, no, this is terrible for you and your asthma. We'll get there. <laughs> yeah, right. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, we have got a lot of bullying and like pettiness to get through until we get there. I, I think that's what made me endeared to her a little bit. Honestly, is the she fucks up at the very beginning. I get mm-hmm. that, right? Mm-hmm. And and it was very shitty of her to demand a bunk be switched. And I was absolutely, really, but, but the way she is then proceeded to be bullied hard for like the first half of the book incessantly. Yeah. I it really endeared me back to Sarah. Honestly, I think that's the intended thing, but I could never because even when she was being bullied, she countered it with more stupidity. If if she could do one thing of value, like <laughs> I, I'm not sure, I'm not sure getting bullied is like the thing is like the valuable thing about her. But it might be, it might be the only thing about her that warrants sympathy. But it's like it's a it's a bathos, not a pathos. <laughs> Bathos. That's damn. I mean, yeah, and this is this is probably me putting too much of my own self on it. But there was there was definitely a vibe I was connecting on mm-hmm. without going into long stories of I went to one of these overnight like water camps for one uh-huh. summer and I had fucking miserable time. And I was mm-hmm. definitely the outside kid. Like this, I, oh, okay. these kids have been doing this every summer. They all know each other. Uh-huh. I'm I'm new and I can't even figure out how to water ski the entire goddamn time. Like I definitely was relating to this, oh, God, this must be hell to be stuck here all summer and no one like you. And, like, multiple times at the campfire, like, they bully her and the camp counselors just let it happen. Uh It's a little bit like, oh, this is terrifying. This is terrifying (laughs) to be this abandoned. Well, the camp counselors are there to be uh, worshipped by the children, too, apparently. Like, like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Liz, the camp counselor. Oh, the hottest woman in the world, apparently. (laughs) Who was was wolf-whistled and cat-called at the fire. (laughs) And I made a note. I made a note. Is this the first Goosebumps book with openly horny children in it? Because I think it is. (laughs) That's a good note. (laughs) I think it's the first one with openly horny children. Also, but very PG horny children because one of the ones I saved was when they, when Jan, uh, or her name's not Jan? What is it? Liz? Liz, Liz. Yeah, Liz. Liz. Liz is going over the camp's water rules, which I, Sarah just continually goes, I stopped listening. I was like, fuck you, Sarah. She checked Uh, out. (laughs) But when Liz, yeah, I know, she does fuck up a lot, but when Liz, <laughs> when Liz starts talk, like talking, 
gets catcalling, one of the jeers from the boys is, she's awesome. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know if that's a jeer that, as much that, as just a... That was, I actually thought about that too. I think that that moment was supposed to be like a she's hot type thing, but they had yeah. to change it because saying she's hot for a bunch of kids is probably not allowed. The real one would have been like, like I hope she gives me mouth to mouth or whatever. Like, Well, then yeah. so, mm-hmm. someone said like, I want you to be my buddy. Like That was like his thing. He was like, I want you to be my buddy. And like kind of this like nice like pervy moment <laughs> for this child. Yeah. And then and then Liz just goes, ah, oh, this is my life and just moves on past it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Liz extols the virtues of the buddy system which is uh rule one Mm -hmm. for for water Mm -hmm. safety the buddy system is basically the backbone of this entire book Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) Uh, the buddy system is great according to according to liz and and richard and a very strict buddy system that they proceed to never follow there's no accountability for the buddy system honestly No. (laughs) no but also like i think i was kind of like not remember where this book went, like, oh, is there something under the lake? You know, is there, like, a, mm-hmm, a camp mm-hmm. jelly jam kind of thing? The way that Liz was saying very especially like, no more ever than three lengths away from a boat from us kind of was like, oh, they are really worried about these kids out on the water. I'm a little scared. And then they just proceed to just let the kids go out and drown over and over They again. just send them free. They go, yeah. you got your buddy, you're going to be good. You're both good. <laughs> it's terrible. So some more pranks happen. The, the rift between Meg, Brianna... Janice and Sarah grows. They put mm-hmm. a snake on her. That's very inappropriate. They put a snake on her, which tur- which turns out to be a, a, a like that's some like fridge horror when you realize what the end of this book is. The whole snake prank thing. Oh yeah, mm, yeah. Oh yeah. Foreshadowing horror. Hmm. Foreshadowing. Or no, Hor- <laughs> We, we get like a classic RL um, chapter break where she's like, oh, no, I stepped in quicksand. <laughs> <laughs> and then she says, wait, there's no such thing as quicksand. There is yeah, such thing right? as quicksand. <laughs> she's like, oh, I learned in fifth grade that I remember that I learned in fifth grade that, that quicksand's not real. I'm like, I think there is, though. I think we're just seeing the the crumbling of the American educational system uh, unfold in this book. Here's the thing. I don't have to look up that quicksand is a thing. I've seen copious movies that rely heavily on the device of quicksand. Oh, yeah. Quicksand is real. Quicksand is a thing. But what if Indiana Jones lied? No. No. Quicksand is real. It's in all my, it's in all my movies. It's on, in all my video games. It's real. Yeah. I don't want or need to know otherwise wait quicksand is real okay sure i'm not googling it right now and i won't tell you what i found chad quicksand is my only way of drowning while still on so. <laughs> don't take this from kevin <laughs> do not take kevin's last opportunity to drown would you would you rather be no like, wouldn't you wouldn't your dwarven sensibilities be like oh good quicksand's gone i don't have to worry about that i can dig wherever <laughs> No, my dwarven sensibilities would give me uh, increased stone sense, and I'd be like, "Hmm, the ground here is different. <laughs> Probably near a river, which is which is feeding a current that uh, makes the sand all quick." He's right. Fuck, he's quicksand's, right. Quicksand's not real. All right. Well, real quick before we go on, but we did get to the quicksand part. I there's a part where they're making fun of her, Brianna and Meg, um, and uh, Sarah thinks in again another moment of supreme lack of self awareness. Why do Brianna and Meg hate me so much? Maybe they're just mean, I decided. Maybe they're total creeps. Maybe they're mean to everyone. In a total, no, it is the children who are wrong moment. Because you did not just bust in the first moment you met these people and force them to have the bad experience that you did not want to have, Sarah. Uh Uh-huh. And also, Sarah Moss's retaliation for the snake was to Mm -hmm. take... She steps in this quicksand, realizes that quicksand, but also... (laughs) Spiders come out of the mud, which is yes. genuinely terrifying. I thought that was actually a very I, scary image. Yeah, I, I think I think mud spiders are is the scariest thing RL has come up. Right, yeah, mud so. spiders is pretty bad. Yeah, it's the most terrifying thing in the world. But then Sarah Moss just kind of like with vengeance in her mind is able to power through, and she scoops up the spiders, the biggest she's mm. ever seen, mm-hmm. yep. into a flashlight. Like she dumps yes. out the batteries and just uses it as like a cantina, I guess. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and then puts it back on you know uh, Brianna and Meg's beds, right? Which I'm mm-hmm. like, you idiot! Those spiders are going to get on your bed. Spiders don't just stay in one spot. And she fulfilled the prophecy at the beginning of, of being worried about bugs coming into the thing, and she caused it. Oh my god, you're right. That's what kicked off this whole problem, Sarah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I I remember going like that's maybe a step too far, Sarah. That's maybe yeah. A... Maybe maybe this book is about like escaping cycles. You know, mm, like maybe that's the uh-huh. theme of this book. Mm-hmm. Like there's this sort of cycle of of uh, of pranking and and uh, and abuse and stanking pranking. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. mm-hmm. <laughs> and and Sarah has to yeah Sarah has to learn to break the circle. I, I, I listen. I think you're adding evidence that this book is very good. Um, <laughs> nope. Nope. Still bad. Nope. 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 So, <laughs> I think there's a couple good genuine scares in it. The mud. The mud sure. spiders is is a great image, and I'd say Jan's next kind of retaliation is is fucking terrifying to me. Pretty fucked up. I guess she kind of like, like, oh, you'll be my buddy. I don't really, I don't want. Also, she gets roped into it, right? <laughs> like, yeah. Uh-huh. Like Sarah yeah. kind of in front of Liz, the guy, the counselor is like, no one wants to be my buddy. Jan said she didn't want to be mine, so she ropes in Jan. Like, cool, great. I bet Jan's really gonna like you now, Sarah. Again, yep. in a moment of the counselors not paying attention to the politics of their camp, they just uh, forge for, forge forward. And force these two children to be buddies. Force these two children together. Yeah. And and seems like it's going to be okay. They're catching mm-hmm. up behind the other canoes, which is like, mm-hmm. camp counselors, guys, pay attention. And yeah. Jan just rides them out into the middle of the lake, starts to rocket back and forth as if she's going to tip Sarah over, mm-hmm. and then yep. jumps and swims back to shore mm-hmm. to leave Sarah to die. With her mm-hmm. asthma, yeah, she's going for a long, hard swim with her asthma. Didn't really think that part of the plan out. I don't think. Yeah, her her asthma does not prevent her from dropping a people's elbow on from the a, from the vengeance. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she she stick flips off and then people's elbows it on the way back into the water, to flip catapulting over. Sarah into the air and then the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's how I would shoot this scene if if I was given. This. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it's like oh, Jason yeah. when Jason comes flying out of the water at the end of Jason one. Uh, yeah, it's that level of <laughs> of drama. <laughs> Jason one. <laughs> so so Sarah is is obviously like, well, I'm done. Uh, I I'm gonna get the hell out of here. Mm-hmm. And she tells her brother, A A Ron, A A Ron, who we mentioned. <laughs> Uh, briefly, uh, he's fine. There's no reason to talk about him. He's just having a good time. He's he's having a great time. He's having uh-huh. mandatory fun. He's he's definitely a type personality, having a great time. Uh, but mm-hmm. you know what? He's not really putting it on Sarah. He's just being like, "Yo, you're overreacting, Sarah. Chill the fuck out." He's got a good. He's he's a wise boy. He's a wise boy. A younger yeah. wise boy. I mm-hmm. yeah. I think even when the snake was put on her and everyone's laughing, I was like, "Hey, hey Ron, this is not the time to." To shame her in front of everyone, but I think he was trying to help. I think he was. He was. To, yeah. He was. That, although I will say, uh, you know, he was being like, "Hey, let's relax about the snake thing." And you know, yeah, yeah, I would be. Yeah. I would be acting the same, Sarah, in this situation. So Sarah's like, "I'm going to call our parents and leave." To and which, board. to which Aaron responds. First thing he says to her is, "Goodbye." He said calmly, "Good luck." Which, in my, <laughs> in, my, in, my in my opinion, I was like, "That's precisely how I feel about Sarah." <laughs> Yeah. Hey, don't don't let the lake hit you in the ass on the way out. Aaron's like, I found my I found my tribe here. You can go. <laughs> I found my real family. This is my chosen family, Sarah. <laughs> We're a water sports. I'm a water sports boy. <laughs> so the next part of this book, I guess content warning suicide. I guess we should yes, throw that this up here. Is, huh. This yeah. is dark. This is dark. <laughs> Dork, this part of the story. Dork, dork, yeah. dork. <laughs> yeah. This is pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. No, this is truly a really, really messed up I, moment. I, I loved this part of it for how dark it got. I thought it was terrifying. Yeah, but, well, again, it, it, it's terrifying, but she's rewarded for it. <laughs> For this, mm. uh, uh, yeah. So, so, okay, yeah. Not a great, not a good look. It's a good point. Suicide warning, right here. We're gonna be talking about this type of stuff because this is the plot of the book. She said she's gonna yeah. run away. Aaron, yay! Aaron talks her out of running away. So she says, "Oh, well, that blatant gesture for attention will not work. So <laughs> maybe I will." <laughs> I think she was trying to get out of there. She was trying to leave. She wanted, a, she wanted attention, Chad. <laughs> but then she says, then she says specifically, she has a plan. So she yep. goes out into the water the next day it's during the swim worst, time. Worst plan. 
And and she goes, yeah, my plan? I'm going to pretend to be dead. I'm going to pretend to die in this thing. I'm going to do a fake a death in the middle of the water. And then she really kills herself. There's a there's a line before it, before she's like, uh, I plan to fake it, where she says, it's just a full like line, full stop at the end. Mm-hmm. I planned to drown myself. Yes. Which is like a uh, Royal Tenenbaums, like, <laughs> oh, 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 needle in the hay starts playing. I was like, holy fuck, that is heavy it's shit, heavy. my guy. <laughs> it's heavy. And she says she's going to do it. And then she says when she does it, she will be re- rewarded with a tabula rasa with these three girls that hate her. <laughs> because when they when she survives the, the attempt... They will have to. They will have to like her and uh, give her attention and be happy with her. Yeah. Also, her plan is so badly thought out that she goes out to the water and 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 she's like talks to Liz, who's just just smoking, I guess. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, smoking, smoking, just rubbing lotion all over her legs. I've had those details. And, <laughs> and and Liz is so. I pictured her as like Paul Rudd in What Hot American Summer, where he just like didn't give a shit. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, whatever, sure. Yeah. Uh, just paddle out. Like, no one wants to be your buddy. Just uh, hang out here in the water in front of me. But then, like, yep. she doesn't make sure that Liz is, like, aware of what she's doing and proceeds to just drown herself where right. no one's paying attention. It's a long drowning sequence. It's like, it's like two a- chapters. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. The, the, one of the chapter cliffhangers or endings is just a very graphic description of, like, the light's in her br- in her brain going out as right. her lungs fill with water. Right. It's dark and long and very drawn out. And it leads to I'm I'm going to say this is the third most interesting part of the book. Okay. And, and it leads to the second most interesting part of the book, which is Death World. Death World is cool. It's like something right? from Ghost of Tsushima. It looks cool as hell in my Ghost mind. Ghost of Tsushima. Yep. Death World is pretty tight. It's pretty dope. It's a, a winter camp, right? Yes. Yeah. She, um, she emerges from the lake to what appears to be the camp in winter. There's snow falling. Mm-hmm. There's this line uh, where... She's like yelling for help, and it, and she says, "Did I have a voice?" Ah, oh, it's so cool. It's creepy. It's really good. Right, this book is pretty good. And this this yeah. part is cool because then Della shows up, a creepy girl who sings the creepy song for the camp and in a creepy way. Yeah, and and then she has a bunch of really uh, creepy scenes with her, looking at her as she floats, and you know she's dead. You figure it out. She figures it out, and then in a big trolls two type moment, she goes, <laughs> "Della's dead." And I'm dead too. <laughs> They're gonna keep me. Oh my god. <laughs> Della is a pretty good ghost, I'd say. Yeah. I like yeah. Della a lot. Yeah. Pretty good, pretty good antagonist in this book as well. Yeah. Uh, fucking with Sarah. The problem is it takes half of the book to get to the creepy ghost girl. Yes. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. We're we're fifty pages pages in at this point, and it I'm like, okay, maybe there's just a turn, and now we're cooking. Uh-huh. Unfortunately, we do not stay in Death World. No, th- this this Silent Hill camp realm, which I was yeah. very much feel. I, I actually thought at this point the story was going to become where like, oh yeah, she is now the ghost that haunts the camp. Right. And this was going to be a yeah. strange like ghost POV for the rest of the book. I was very mm-hmm. excited for that. Mm-hmm. I. I imagine like RL must have like driven past a campground in winter and was like, huh, this shall be my next book. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's what he, that I feel like that must've been it because they're, it's weird. It's like, a, it's like a ghost. They're like ghost towns in, uh, in winter. It's, especially it's some, in, yeah. winter. in a summer camp in the Northeast America, yeah. some guards mm-hmm. yeah. got reports of a break in at, uh, at a camp. <laughs> Uh, and they're like, oh, I gotta drive up there during the winter. And they went up there, and they just found RL in the like the cabin pantry, just eating out of cans of food and hissing. Uh-huh. At them. He's like, I'm doing research, <laughs> wearing a curly blonde wig like Della. <laughs> I love the idea of feral RL that ha- <laughs> as as he's as he's developing each book, he enters a feral state briefly, <laughs> like a raccoon scavenging <laughs> through ideas. He's, he's method. He's method. Like, he's got it. Met the first method, Arthur. Yeah, he's got to He's got to inhabit the role of Della if he's really gonna. <laughs> wow, I love that. Uh, so Sarah comes out of the uh, Silent Hill camp realm. Uh, boy, oh, 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 Kevin, please. Sorry, one more note. Okay, Just, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have to bring up 
that Della uh, has blue fire in her eyes. Oh, I missed. Uh, I, I forgot yeah, about that. I forgot detail. that too. That's rad. I don't know if you guys remember the moment as a child when in fiction you heard about blue fire. Uh-huh. Like for me, it was probably like Zelda, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah, oh my god, fire! That's blue." That's the coolest idea I've ever heard in my entire life. The hottest fire. It's still the coolest thing in the entire world. Blue fire is the most amazing thing, most amazing concept humans have come up with. Ice fire? So cool. Ice fire. (laughs) Cold fire? (laughs) When Goku had blue fire around him when he was powering up, probably the coolest. When Gokus turned into a monkey and killed his grandpa, (laughs) that was... (laughs) (laughs) So Sarah Moss comes back to reality... Getting to French the hot counselor. <laughs> she's brought back and she's returned and she's she, and she's getting everything she wanted. Attention is lavished upon Sarah. And well, I'm sorry, not to correct you, Paul, but is it though? Because like, I felt like immediately they're like, oh, she probably just did that trying to get attention for. Well, herself. I'm like, wow, these kids. Another moment of complete lack of self awareness. I wrote the whole quote out because she says. She did it for attention, I heard someone mutter. I turned and saw Jan whispering to another girl. Now everyone has to say, poor Sarah, Jan whispered nastily. Now everyone has to be nice to her. I felt hurt. I opened my mouth to say something to Jan. But that is precisely what she said she wanted from this situation right before she drowned herself chapters previously. She was going to say, gotcha, bitch. She was going to say that. (laughs) Also, did she develop, like, super hearing abilities in the ghost world? Like, or is that a really loud, stagey whisper? She does have ghost hearing, yes. You just emerged from the water and you're spewing gunk from all your orifices mm-hmm. and now you're like oh i hear perfectly all of the smack <laughs> talk being said around maybe me. being on the precipice of death has uh attuned her senses to their maximum on, state. on the rain slicked precipice of death mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yes it opened her third year yes <laughs> which ironically in your nose mm. oh, fun okay good to wow know. Think about it. Get acoustics in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, you're right. It does. This this act does pay off and reward Sarah for it when she gets back to the camp, ca- mm-hmm. uh, the cabin. The three mm-hmm. girls have all decided they were really mean to Sarah in the beginning. She gets precisely what she imagined would happen. And again, uh, yeah. in a story where you're going to use suicide as a uh, as a tool to, pr- pr- to propel your plot forward and a motivation for your character. Maybe don't reward them when they when they attempt yeah, it. Yeah, that's very fair. It's pretty messed up. It's like in what I remember in the Twilight books where, like, Bella is so... Yeah, you didn't think we were going to talk about Twilight. Where Bella is so <laughs> upset that, like, Edward's gone that she kills herself or tries to. Uh-huh. And mm. that rewards her by Edward coming back. Not you're like, good. Oh, you're teaching maybe the wrong lesson here with that, right? Not good. Suicide never answer. Uh, so what happens? I mean, they they kind of seems like or this is around like halfway through the book still, and like okay, we're now kind of doing a reset. Oh, mm-hmm, now mm-hmm. now Sarah will will be friends with these girls. They can bond and right. they can solve this mystery of of Della, who starts to appear in reality to her all the time in very like striking ways oh yeah because and i don't think we said this yet della needs a buddy to ascend to second death world Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. oh yeah she says that in the silent hill realm she's like i've been waiting for someone for so long yeah now you're here yeah della just kind of like pops up and like i don't know dances to charleston while (laughs) sarah points at her and everyone's like what are you I, I, talking yeah, like about she's doing like the wednesday adams like foot shimmy dance in, in the background <laughs> yeah. you know it's the wednesday adams foot. you know what i'm talking you know what i'm talking about you i don't remember guess. wednesday adams ever dancing <laughs> oh you oh you'll see it hold on I'll get a okay 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 oh from the yes yes from the original <laughs> original adams family mm-hmm. as lurch watches her do the the soft shoes or whatever yeah, yeah. okay soft yeah. Shoes. <laughs> yeah. she, I, the old soft shoes <laughs> picturing Della doing this in the doorway is pretty good uh, hey babe hey babe what do you say we go down to the swing center tonight and do the old soft shoes <laughs> let's go for a swim uh, the, the, the one scene where she talks to I think Richard the camp counselor about it and they're like hey uh, you've almost drowned like twice now uh, maybe, maybe you take a day off uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and and she's like, "Who died here?" Right, I know yeah. someone died. Or she's like, "I know someone drowned." 
because he's like, no one drowned in the lake. And I'm not offering up any other information that mm-hmm. you didn't ask for. I mean, I couldn't tell if he genuinely didn't know, too. Because, like, I'm like, is this Richard's, like, third year? Who knows? Right. It, it really feels like this whole camp is in kind of, like, a free fall. Uh, <laughs> and it feels like whoever, whatever a, a semi-adult show up first get to run the thing every summer. That's kind of why I'm getting. <laughs> Richard just parked his car there first and became camp counselor. Hey, I got here first. I'm the head dude. <laughs> Listen, Richard's dad owns the dealership that keeps the town. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yes, this is where they keep the rest of the leftover cars during the winter. They park them on the yeah. campground. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a college football stadium nearby that they use for uh, to extra parking. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> no phone lines? Don't need them. Rip them out. We have no way to contact the outside world. <laughs> See, that sounds like something you don't want when you have, like, one nurse that's only kind of on staff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if the entire activity of this camp... This isn't, like, a camp where it's like, oh, we have a bunch of stuff to do. It's all dangerous water sports. It's all water sports. Yeah, maybe, like, a phone line and, like, a helipad, you know? like. Mm-hmm. But there, that moment where she's talking to Richard and she's like, "Who? I know someone died here. And she points to the doorway and Della's there. Mm-hmm. Just staring at her grinning, which could be very creepy if done well. Yeah. And then Richard looks over there and like she's still there. That's where she's just soft shoeing. Like Della yeah. doesn't just do the appear and disappear. Della just like is a presence. She smiles creepily. She Cheshire cats from it from a distance everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, she troll she troll faces. Yeah, she troll faces for sure. <laughs> I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it. <laughs> That, Della has a lot of you mad energy. That, that made me really like Della as a ghost, just because of the yeah. I guess like she's not going away. She's not just doing jump scares. Mm-hmm. It's it's mm-hmm. what I kind of remember American Werewolf in London of just like yeah you have, you have your dead friend that just like hangs around you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. I th- I thought that part was kind of rad. Yeah, brazenly scary. But there is an interesting scene where. Brianna? Brianna is like, hey, what the fuck is up with you, Sarah? I thought you were cool now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Sarah's like, don't you see her? And Brianna just gives her a look. A interesting look. I think that's the scene. Yeah, is I, that I, how I tried to screenshot runs? this because it was also like, it's described as if Brianna gave one of the most astounding faces I have ever seen. But then it's like not a cliffhanger in a chapter. There's right. just a, a gap. It just kind of passes over it. Yeah, and just jumps to it. Um, it's important. Did anyone notice like the rampant use of italic text in this book? I I did not. He, he uses a lot of italicized text to like convey tone, hmm. especially in the early chapters to make Sarah sound like super sarcastic. To, like have certain words have a lot of emphasis. No, I missed that. Yeah, I noted it early on, and like I think he kind of drops it most of the way through. Mm. Like once we hit Death mm-hmm, World, mm-hmm. it's kind of gone. But there are a lot of italics. In her this book. sarcasm gets killed in her body when she goes to Death World. <laughs> <laughs> that shows her evolution as a character. She leaves it behind in Death World. <laughs> Once you've ascended to first Death World, there's only uh, there's only earnestness. But if you get to the angelic sphere, you get angelic irony, which is even greater. <laughs> yeah. Once your heart is weighed against a feather, and all your sarcasm is, <laughs> <laughs> is placed on it. <laughs> Sarah proceeds to be haunted by Della for the rest of the book. Yeah. To a comical degree. And now, instead of Sarah acting uh, socially anxious and create and, and uh, neurotic and creating problems, she's just acting like a person who is seeing a ghost everywhere. Uh, yeah. And just acting completely. At this point, uh, she's divorced from reality, it seems. Can I, can I point out one scary moment that we're probably going to gloss over? I, I think that around mm-hmm. this time whether it's the second or third day in a row that Sarah should not have been allowed to go onto the lake. Mm-hmm. She decides to buddy up with Jan. They're going to swim out to do some sort of like swim out to the middle of the lake and yes. do that back, which I did in a camp. It is terrifying. I hated it. Again, let's get a helicopter pad ready for these kids because someone's yeah. drowning <laughs> during this event. Let's, let's send Asthma Girl and Girl Who Drowned <laughs> the day before. The day before. To buddy up and swim to the middle of the lake. And they do this and she has a bad experience. And I, we'll get to that. But real quick, I do, I do got to say that Richard... In a moment of, of again, self-awareness goes, yeah, you know what? You did just drown yesterday. That probably was a bad idea to send you right back into the water today. <laughs> <laughs> that was my bad. That was my That's bad. my bad. That's all me. shoulda, woulda, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, you know what? How about you go water skiing tomorrow? Yeah. Yeah. 
That'll fix you. What could go wrong? There's no such thing as a motorboat ghost. <laughs> Hold on. Before the motorboat ghost, though. Yes. Right. Yes. Before. I just want to, the, the part that scared me with the, the mid lake swim mm-hmm. is when she mm-hmm. thought she was following Jan. And as she got out to the middle, she realized that Della is the one that she's been following. Yeah, Della has the ability to warp reality, it seems, around her. Yeah. Yeah. She can, like, like in the Matrix where, you know, one of the agents can just kind of take over a body. Right. Della could just do that. Mm-hmm. And Della proceeds to start to, like, try to drown her in the middle. Like, I thought that was genuinely scary. That was. That was. She does that. She does that. And then she climbs back into the boat when she realizes that Della has lured her out. And then mm-hmm. Della's there now. And Della gives her another scare. And then she gets pulled in, and then that's when we have our uh, Richard, you know, is like, I'm the head dude. I'll take the head responsibility for this poor choice. You're going, you're going water skiing tomorrow. (laughs) Cue cue the water skiing scene. Yeah. Motorboat ghost. Number one most interesting part of this book is a haunted motorboat. Yes. Uh, Have you guys ever, have you guys water skied before? No, but it sounded fun because Sarah was having a good time. Even. (laughs) This this like the 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 real summer camp the overnight camp that I went to, I mm. I signed up for water ski lessons and it was one of the worst experiences. Of, oh why? Well, because there's like really? twelve kids all trying to water ski with one boat mm-hmm. for like you know a two hour session a day. Oh geez. And so you basically get like three shots to stand up and then you're mm-hmm. done. <laughs> so okay. like, so they just they spend forever getting in the water with the fucking right. skis on that are not mm-hmm. buoyant and mm-hmm. and they're like all right we're gonna start it up the boat and then they just and then they just drag you because <laughs> getting up is incredibly hard especially when you're a big awkward heavy set boy mm-hmm. uh and then you go well you, three times you couldn't stand up just sit in the boat and now watch everyone else do it for the rest of the day like mm-hmm. fucking sucks okay I, I I could see that now. I see that. A lot of pressure. A, stage a lot of pressure. A lot of, yeah, a lot of stage fright. And mm-hmm. also, you're getting dragged through the water at like night. If you hold on to that like tether, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. you just get dragged through the water. It's terrifying. <laughs> so that setup for this one got me a little bit. But I, I didn't want to stop you, Kevin. I'm sorry for interrupting you in the middle of setting up speed for, for, speed boat. For speed ghost. <laughs> no. Speed ghost. I, I think like the the funniest part of that is. She's out there on the rope getting pulled along. I guess the counselors just vanished and Della is now driving the boat. Again, she's able yeah. to create pocket ghost realities, it appears. <laughs> she creates a, a wall of blue flame that shoots out and, and envelops the area. Dark Souls music starts to play <laughs> yes. as, as Della circles her on the boat. So, though I did not like this book, uh, I do like Della. And I, I would... I would love a Della sequel because I think she's really fun. If the first half had more Della, this would probably yes. be good. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, Della is like a Looney Tunes antagonist. Yes. Is mm-hmm. is this mm-hmm. point after after Sarah's like, oh, no, I don't want to be pulled along by this boat. And like, let's go. She's like, well, at least I'm safe because I have this life preserver. Della then proceeds to just slowly drive the boat and turn around to run her over. She comes head on at her. There's a long, long sequence of her trying to take the life vest off. And then she says, and the boat chopped my head off. (laughs) Della charging at her in the in the speedboat, making a rat fink face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) She is hunched for it. She is hunched up. Hanging out over the side with her tongue and eyes. (laughs) (laughs) Della's fucking rad. She's cool. Della rules, dude. Yeah, Della's great. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so uh sarah's head gets chopped off mm-hmm. but then it doesn't because it was the <laughs> life vest which got chopped in half because yep. mm-hmm. that's um uh, we're not at page 100 yet right yeah the, no, that's how you know the life preserver took the hit it somehow narrowly mm-hmm. missed any of her body and now she's yep. able to to dive underwater and she just basically like gets out of the lake very quickly yeah yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she's like, "Fuck this!" Smart. And so she decides to and she decides to run away this time for real this time. Except she didn't listen to the twenty safety rules of Camp Cold Lake. Mm-hmm. She runs into the woods where she meets Della, and Della is like, "I didn't drown. I got bit by a snake." And then Sarah's like, "Oh shit! There's a chubby." St- <laughs> they describe the snake <laughs> as like no, chubby. they don't. They say the snake's fat. <laughs> Do they really? <laughs> 
<laughs> and it's like a it's like a fat, fat, chubby, chunky snake with little pudgy cheeks. It's been it's curled up. It's been it's leg. been feasting on kids, so it's it's yeah. got a nice yeah. plumpness to it. A little chode it's snake just, a... just crawls around her leg. <laughs> a little chunkus chode snake. Uh, a a, a sukinoko. <laughs> I don't know what that is. You guys know about the Sukinoko? I'll post Sukinoko. Yeah, I gotta see the Sukinoko. <laughs> Ooh, I love me a new a new cryptid. Is it a yokai? Way better than a yokai. Uh, it's not a yokai. Have you guys seen an umbrella yokai? Oh my Whoa! god, it looks real. Obviously, Sukinoko is real. Dude, that thing will charge you and break your femur. <laughs> Yeah, Look at that chunky boy. I like his little like doggy rat tail. I know it kind of makes him cute. Like I think he's kind of cute. I think he's kind of cute too. He kind of looks like my cat Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a cat quality about there him. There is. Oh my god, I love him. Anyway, we find out that she was reverse psychologying Sarah to come get murdered in the woods by uh, Suchinoko, and yep. uh, and then she's going to do that until. Brianna comes in in a bucket. A bucket is lowered from the sky. Uh, yep. <laughs> with with a, Brianna a, a, with with our a Brianna ex machina. Brianna ex machina comes in, floating down in a in a robotic robot bucket. Della. And she basically says to to Della, "Go on, get." Don't get out of here! <laughs> she shakes a can of pennies at Della. Yeah. And she, <laughs> she smacks the pan, the pan with a spoon, goes, Yeah, get out of here, bear! <laughs> yeah, yeah! She tells Della, she she talks shit to Della. She's like, Della, you tried to do this to me last year, but I had a girl who showed up, and she showed me how to survive this, and I'm back, bitch. And I'm here to <laughs> save the next girl. And this girl's gonna come back next year and save the next girl. At this moment, I'm like, Okay, all right, I'm kind of on board. And then Della's like, no, and she dramatically falls out of a tree and vanishes. Yes. If if that was how it ended, yes. I would be like, wow, that is awesome. Yes. Like the cycle continues, and this and this book is concerned with cycles. Right. And uh, yeah, that would be an amazing way but to do it. But Feral RL, Feral, uh, yeah. he <laughs> <laughs> he. Cannot contain himself and must put two more pages into this book. I must ruin it. Yep. <laughs> yep. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Kevin, would you like to describe those final two pages? Brianna is also a ghost. Della succeeded in killing Brianna. Mm-hmm. And now Brianna is like, now that I've scared the, co- the competitor ghost off, you're my buddy. We're ascending uh, to second death world. Mm-hmm. Womp, womp womp. Out of the frying pan and into the fryer. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> and that is what ruins this book. It was. It would have been yeah. like you said. It would have been a cool circular quality to it. Yeah. That that last actual turn really does. It it like it kind of also just doesn't make sense in the book that's already no, been established. No, no, because Brianna interacts with other kids, unless everybody's dead. Maybe. Yeah, how could how could anyone, like, see Brianna and not see Della? Like, right. do you lose your ghost potency after being in Death World 1 too long? Or I, My brain immediately went to the original time that first she, she meets the first three kids. And, like, mm-hmm. oh, well, yeah. Brianna must have been the one on the bunk and that's what maybe, I thought too, Chad. And, and yes. maybe I misread it, and that's why the counselor was so cool with letting her have the other bunk, because as far as that counselor's concerned, there's not a fourth kid, right? Like, mm-hmm. she's not seeing Brianna. No, Brianna and Meg want to have bunks together. Like, they hang out. Brianna reacts to spiders on her. Mm-hmm. So, like, mm-hmm. she's a she's a whatever, like a, a, a wraith more than anything. I don't know. <laughs> she's a she's a she's a deep cover ghost, is what she is. Yeah. You could do this through like the, um, you know, like the the Rugrats theory where and Angelica's a crackhead remembering all this shit, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it, and everyone's dead or something like that. Right. Like, there's some like Edward sure. like Rugrats theory out there. I'm sure that theory exists. Yeah, you could do. You could be like, oh well, Meg still recovering from her grief and like she's imagining Brianna there. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and Bri- Brianna is a tulpa created by the the mutual grief and regret of everyone at camp. Damn, and- Kevin, that's a much better fix for this book that RL definitely didn't think about. <laughs> and also uh Janice is there and she just sucks. She's just a mean person. <laughs> yeah, if Janice had been I'm just trying to figure out a way to fix if Janice had been the ghost and not Brianna, 
Mm-hmm. Like, maybe that would have helped because you'd be like, oh, now I get why Jan was trying to, like, drown her in the beginning. Right. Janice is around for more of the terror than Brianna. Brianna just shows up randomly at the end. It's like, oh, hey, remember you tortured me a little bit? Now, here's a snake. Put this, put the, the snake bite you. It's going to be good. Yeah, Janice seemed like the more likely candidate. Let this chubby snake bite you. <laughs> <laughs> I, as chubby girl, have command of all their things that are chubby. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Now that's a power. <laughs> Yeah, I I got I, I agree with you guys. Like that extra turn was so unnecessary that it almost right. kind of like it almost like Game of Thrones season eight, where it's just like, oh, right. not, did right. I like any of this? Did I right. did, was any of this good? Right. It just colors everything that came before it. Uh huh. Which is why I say Camp Cold Lake maybe not RL's finest hour. <laughs> yeah i I want to like I want to do an RL cut. Right, release the release right. the Stein cut and right, <laughs> and but instead of adding another ninety pages, you cut off like that last five five pages and mm-hmm. maybe a little bit of the bullying, play some curse groundwork too in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we don't even get any we don't even get get any, any like lore about this place being ha- haunted or cursed or anything like that, and that would have been nice. Just so when ghosts do start showing up, we're like, there, there it is. There's the curse. We were, we heard about it. If if half your book is going to be character development, maybe give us something about this character to like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. She was just. I was on Jan's side. I'm I'm Team Jan. <laughs> uh, like, unless your character is going to change over the course of uh of the book, which Sarah does not. Like, she doesn't change at all. She doesn't learn anything. Mm. She's still the same person yeah. at the start of the book that she is at the end of the book. She does learn that uh water skiing is pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> but like but like even when you have a character arc like that, it's still a really hard sell to make people hang out with a terrible character for most of mm-hmm. that book. That's very fair. That's mm-hmm. very, very fair. Mm-hmm. Maybe cushion that a bit. Also, like, Della's big plan is almost, like, too, more of a twist than needs to be done, right? Where, like, the the twist of I was trying to not only, you know, I just want you to die and you're going to die because of all the snakes in the woods. It's one of the rules you didn't listen to. It's pretty solid. It's right. overly annoying in that, that, you know, Sarah has, I think, at least three or four different chances to hear the rules and zones out every time, including <laughs> after drowning, um, where I think you'd be a little bit more like, I'm going to listen this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, but the the next level of it, of Della going, well, no, I didn't want you to drown in the lake. I wanted you to be so scared of the lake that you would leave and go into the woods to get bit by a snake is a is a bit like fourth dimensional chess that I think a ghost would do. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I, I don't think I don't think she'd have to die in the same way to be the buddy, but I think it works out either way. Like if Ratfink Speedboat goes, <laughs> it'd be fine. <laughs> Rat Fink Speedboat Ghost is an amazing <laughs> phrase. No, yeah, I think Della would have taken that death. It's not like Della being like, oh, damn, I accidentally got her. Yeah, I, I I, still, I think my love of Della is pushing this higher up for me. But every complaint about it is incredibly you, valid. You have sold us on. I think your love for it has made yeah. me appreciate the Della sections a little bit more. I bumped it up a few numbers maybe yeah. on the scale. Yeah. I think there is something um, interesting and good here, uh, but I, I think it needs a new uh, perspective character. Mm-hmm. If we sequeled this out, I maybe we put Aaron A. A. Ron as the yeah uh, A. A. Ron's having a good time. Yeah, maybe we, maybe we make him the perspective character, and maybe he's like trying to he's trying to track down the mystery of his uh, dead. Sister I like that a lot, like that. Kevin. Yeah, because now we yeah. have also he has like a little bit. Again, we're giving this, this is probably a better book than ever be written. Like, Aaron has <laughs> guilt, probably, over yeah, uh-huh. kind of, like, ignoring his sister's complaints. And, you know, he basically said, go mm. with God, as she left for the woods and died. <laughs> I'm That's, telling you, yeah. he was okay yeah. with it. He was give, He was like, <laughs> he made the sign of the cross and then said, oh, thank God. He looked up to the sky and said, thank you, Lord, and walked away. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to get to second base somehow at this camp. <laughs> 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 I'm having a great time at camp. <laughs> well, while Sarah Moss is being bitten by a snake, it just cuts to Aaron playing guitar around the campfire with everyone. Singing just... Wonderwall for all the Singing kids. Yeah. Wonderwall. 
let me tell you guys, second base is a crazy base. I don't know if you know about this, but it's a it's it's a fun place to hang. Out. <laughs> <laughs> crazy time. Is that a, is that a goosebuds, boys? Yes, I gotta say, so we sometimes rank things. I will say this is not the worst book, but I need to put on a pedestal. It needs to be said. This is the worst Goosebumps character. Sarah Moss. Oh, is the protagonist. Worst Goose- yeah, sure. Worst protagonist. Wow, so far. really? The worst? She has bolted to the uh, top as the worst. We we found the worst kid. The worst kid, least sympathizable. I can't, I can't list worst because I feel like there's some prank kid I hate way more, but I can't name him. There have been recent ones that I can't yeah, specifically recall, but I had said were the worst character. This, I am positive, is the worst character. What what I think is somewhat interesting to me is that I actually remembered the character name Sarah Moss from reading this as a kid. Whoa. Like, some, whatever, maybe it's just the uniqueness of that last name. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it had stuck with me on some level, like, oh, yeah, this is a character in the Goosebumps lore. Like, I, it, it had, maybe, maybe she pops up in Fear Street or something, and I completely forgot, but... Uh huh. Um, yeah, it, it's enough that while she sucks, I would say she's at least a memorable protagonist. Okay, fair. Sure, but memorable for being bad. <laughs> oh, also, you know what? I'm just realizing. Uh, Sarah J. Moss is a New York Times bestselling fantasy author, so maybe that's what I was thinking of. That's what hey. it is. I was thinking of. Um, William Gibson uh, in his uh, universe. Uh, there's a Moss uh, uh, corporation that does cybernetic stuff it's a fun last name it's cool it's fun it's cool. That's a good name i put this around the middle but if you ask me to rank my favorite like goosebumps goosebumps like antagonist ghost villains i i put i put Della in my okay. top five i put her okay. right up there yeah the two of the best characters the best ghost and the best bad kid i'd i'd love to i'd love to see Della again over like slappy oh, totally yeah Del- Della's yeah. like almost like a looney tunes character yeah, and I mean, like, Della's whole thing about finding a buddy, it, like, that's good. That's good creep. Yes. That's, that's mm-hmm, a good creep. Totally. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like a sympathetic ghost a little bit, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Totally. Totally. A, totally. Form of, a form of evil we can relate to. Right, guys? <laughs> Everyone wants yeah. a buddy. Hey, I'm glad I have you guys as my buddies, but in a non-death way. Aww. Yeah, I don't need to kill Aww. anyone to get my buddies. I have them already. <laughs> oh, thanks, buds. Should we wrap it up, boys? Yeah, let's end it. Let's kill Let's it. Let's kill it. Uh, if you guys want... Let's drown it in the lake. <laughs> <laughs> drown it in the lake. Uh, b- by the way, Sarah Moss could have tried one time to just, like, read some comic books in her bunk. Just a quick thought, Sarah. You could have mm. maybe not gone out into the water. Could have been an indoor kid for a little bit. I don't know. Try some woodworking. If you want to support the show. Yes. You get access to bonus episodes. Yes. The oh, wonderful, yeah. hilarious Camp Goosebud episodes we record every month. Yes. Uh, get access to our Discord. And I get to vote on what we read in future episodes. You can go to patreon.com slash goosebuds. As that will become even more crucial as we move into the 2000 series, you will be able to decide the order in which we approach those books. You control the fate. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at GooseBudsPod. Uh, and hey, we while we have some uh, merch stuff, you can go to GooseBuds.com. Nope. Goosebuds.store. <laughs> Keep it, it all in. Keep, Keep it all, it all in. in. Goosebuds.store. Uh, we definitely also want to work on some uh, upcoming stuff, including the new, uh, some merch with like you know, uh, our new awesome logo and cover art design by Brock Gallagher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe a sexy calendar featuring all of us. Uh, oh, sure. I could be on board. I call September. Ooh. You seem like a September. Oh, that's a sexy Thank bomb. you. Yeah, I just want to, yeah, it's fall. Me just in the leaves. Duh, take us back to school. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think you got you to gotta end it there. That's just, that's it. Okay. Yeah. All right. See you guys. Bye. 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 Hello, Goose Buddies, and welcome once again to the Book of Names. We'd like to thank everyone who supported our show by uh, reading their name from our large leather-bound book that contains unspeakable power. It's glowing. People like Stefan Jive Turkey Kuwabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Cameron Murphy Audio. Michael McDowell. David Cron. Josh Robertson. Mickey C. Nathan Dolezal. Clayton C. Mike Lanteri. Buddy Morrill. 
Al Cade. Mel Dipson. Jim Greaves. Zen Keith. Af Sheen. Danky McStanky. Aaron T. Strunk. Dango Twiss. Victor. Brian Wells. Zentacles. Stealth Bates. Becca McWilliams. I feel like I always say Becca McWilliams a name like that. I'm sorry, Becca. I'm going to switch it up next time. I promise. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to find new ways to do it, too. <laughs> Joseph Miranda. Patrick Reynolds. Scott Colopy. Robert Moon. Jason Crooker. John Keaty. Clay Castle. Miguel Pardo. Christina Dolan. Matthew, the Necrofan Mail Nomicon. Nice. Sniggy. Re-infected. Maddie. Ishak Arafin. Low Belly Hate Me. Gregory D. Warren. Alan Seller. Sam Hash. Cody Redfield. Rich Hillborn. Bradford Coulter. Aiden Alexander Diaz. Jonas Blatterman. Jar Jar Slinks. Nice. He's slinking now, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Joshua Jacobwitz. <laughs> Justin Wagman. Chosen One. Cardboard Walk. Leviathan. My favorite magic card. <laughs> Up and Champ. Jonas Engman. Alicia Grafe. Trent Davis. Mo Loyster. Brock Graham. Carl. Hey, Paul. You told me to pause for a second. I don't know if you wanted me to pause for a second. I'll, I'll read it out loud. Pause for a second. I got to get something off my chest. I think I love Brock. I love broccoli, too. It's a great vegetable. Roasted is great. Oh, yeah. It's good for you, too. Mm -hmm. Delicious. The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Joe Gorman. Paul Grasso. Trans Rights. Elusive Koala. Blake Alvarez. Yanni Markovina. Taylor Dirks. Joe, remember to save early and often Scott. Space Tiger. Joe. Brooke X. Corey Shelley. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's a good read. I like thank that. You, thank you. Christian Van Skeever. Trendy Moron. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Connor Church. Vincent Modica. Luke Canoodles. Jordan Lockwood. Foolish for Deborah. Zach Connor. Hugh Bullet. Zam Bambino. Patreon underscore donator, comma, yo. Yes, nailed it. Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney. Tom Whittem. Nicholas Johnson. Kevin Hamilton. Andrew, oh man, what are we going to do with all these ding-dongs in America, Jadzik? Lord Cornwallis. Eric England. Elizabeth Steenweg. Cardamom Birkinbino. Andrew Evans. John the Howling Eye Duda. Nathan Remick. Divaldi. Daddy's Happy Apple Boy. Oh, re mm. Dubin. Yay! Some cool chads are cool and not frat chads, you see. I wish Chad was here to see that, because I don't know <laughs> if he sees that yet. Uh, he feels it. He though. feels it. I think he know, he felt it when, when that was read. <laughs> Goot goots. Joey Evans. Carly Sarnowski. Sness Chalmers. He said it the way he said it the way he says it. Sean Minogue. Carewise Gamgee. Wormtown Glenn. Wiggle it. Swaggy Yolo Squire. Cameron Hansen. John Pigeon Hat Barber. Paul, watch out. Slink's behind you. Oh, shit. It's like narrow slinking. Yeah. Chip Handsome. Uh, Matt McClellan. Stink Lanch. Generally depressing. It's an Omar. Jail Chip. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ben Bohan. Alex Moon, the robot dong. Sarah Camp. Tanya Turtle. Chili Dish Gambino. Dan. Chris Pittman is a bone wizard. Yeah, so am I. Cool. Baz Gerritsen. Brett. When dragons rule. Jonas and Voldson. Calamity Carl. Germ Juice. Adam, you goofed. Juan Jalapena. Nick Johnson. Muscles Bear. Stephen Day. Keith Halcrow. Dakota Campion. Chris, back to that Mastosphere hustle, <laughs> Nelson. Timothy Misodoulakis. Not us. <gasps> See, got chills from that read. Ooh. <laughs> Something evil in that name. Clay McCarty. Kate and Franklin. Matthew Stevens. Par Curly. <laughs> Ryan Gabriel. Sadie Kitson. Wade across. Jeremy Bowser. The Venomous Viper. I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> exactly. I'm doing it. I'm going. Do. Oh, no. We're, play we're playing horse oh, at this no, point. Oh, no. It's not going to work. Hey, boat. Damn it. We'll be right back to our old male Christmas origin miracle on 34 skins after this message is. <laughs> Megan McCormick Mason. Raymond Hernandez. Flemily. The Crow Feds. Matthew Sutton. Ninja Breadman. Hood Lemon. Carter Glass. Patrick Murphy. 
Jeffrey Owen Cawhey. Got little old moi, pretty freaked. Kelsey Kinnaman. Dave Rubin. Jimmy Soul. Russell Castberg. Peanut Berg, level 69. Nice. nice. Uh, Xavier Jimenez. Dr. Chocula. Brendan Arafin. Liam Neeson's doe. Chris Putrakis. Wunderskin. Sunset Streak. Meet Virginia. <laughs> Jordan Slamsey. Elliot Thompson III. Moon Juice. Michael Mello. Adam Muth. Dungeon Kappa. Kelly the Barbarian. MMMC Hamster. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. Je- uh, <laughs> Zach Ware. <laughs> Tamid Munir. Cod Salmon. Alan G. Jussum. Jussum. George Michael Wham. <laughs> Parentheses wham. Parentheses wham. 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 Sobias Clark. Michael Kupka. Julian Lamendia. <laughs> Brendan Neal. Robert Allen Cook III. Ashley North. <laughs> Mike Spaghetti Jones. <laughs> Redemption. Leanna Urenko. Scalafella. The Davy Boy. Kenny M. Chris. <laughs> 69 Polly Shore 311 <laughs> XX underscore Epic Gamer 42069 underscore XX Smith. Fuck, I fucked it up. <laughs> Kieran McNamara. Diet Soda. Quigley Jones. Ross Short. And we have new patrons this month. Everybody give a book of names welcome to Jackie Ledoux. Coleman Laguza. Zachary Roberts. Mark. Welcome, Alex Orr. Hello, Wagmar Wigmer. And welcome, Dakota Kemp. Thanks for adding your name to the book and increasing all of our collective power uh, in a spooky way. I feel it. Yes. Oh, God. Oh God. <laughs> He's vibrating. Ah. He's vibrating with energy. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much energy. We have to end the podcast. The only cure is more people joining the book of names. Tell your friends to join it. Bye, everybody. Oh, I need more power. I, I do begrudgingly like musicals sometimes, but... Uh, also, I, I'm sorry, Kevin, I just gotta tell you, by the way, you're gonna have to either cut this out or I have to apologize to the audience because Archie has decided to scratch I, his fucking belly. I, I, I the entire fucking podcast. I Archie! Am. Chad, you're I s- wanted to I wanted to say something, but I knew it was not within your control. Archie! Scary to me he does it, sorry. Chad, if you have to scratch that dog's belly, like, that might, that might be... <laughs> Because, I'm sorry. because Chad, I can't. I, I'm telling you right now, there's no Archie filter. Archie has been Archie has been taken to the shadow realm. Okay, he's good. <laughs> Poor sorry. Archie. Please continue, Kevin. I'm oh, so sorry. Man. That's good. Let's go to the end.